Hi and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Maths uh, mini-series on the history of Greek mathematics. So mathematics in general has always been a unifying principle throughout civilizations over time. Um, like a lot of sciences, math has always built on, upon itself, which makes the ideas from the past just as important as the ideas that are more contemporary and um, groundbreaking. This series is meant to be a little short introduction on some of the early themes and problems from Greek mathematics. Um, it's a very short introduction, so it definitely doesn't go into detail on all of the problems and theorems that have arisen from Greek math, um, but it's supposed to give you just a little taste on what math history as a science and a uh, subject is like. There are many other significant cultures that aren't mentioned in this series. If you find that you're interested after watching this series, I suggest you check out our blog post that has some titles that you might be interested in reading. Um, for now though, this series covers the history of Greek mathematics, first beginning with the beginning of Greek mathematics and the numeral system that all of the problems were created and solved in. And then it goes over three of the most important Greek mathematicians, Pythagoras and his followers, Euclid and Archimedes. The beginnings of mathematics in Greece is said to have begun with Thales. According to Greek history, it was Thales of Miletus who brought mathematics to Greece from Egypt in sometime around the 6th century BC. The notion of the importance of proofs was championed by Thales. So unlike civilizations before them who used mathematics as a tool for practical applications, Greek mathematics was a more intellectual interest. Thales is hailed as being the father of geometry, with a list of propositions attributed to him from antiquity. But modern scholars are not able to directly link him to any of these geometric ideas for lack of documents. Greek mathematics in general has very little original material left. Instead, math historians have reconstructed the ideas and theories from the Greeks from copies of copies of their works. Therein lies some variation in the accuracy of these reconstructions. Around the same time that Thales began to introduce mathematics to Greece, the Greek numeral system was also developed. Around the 5th century BC, they created a system consisting of 24 letters from the previous Greek alphabet and three Phoenician letters. The three Phoenician letters can be seen here as the six for vow, also called the digamma, the nine for copa, and the nine hundred or sampai. This was an additive system, meaning that numbers from 1 to 999 could be represented by at most three symbols. For numbers larger than 999, an accent marked the lower left of a symbol meant that it was multiplied by 1,000. For tens of thousands, Greeks used a new le letter, or an M or myriad, meaning 10,000. This letter placed below or next to one of the Greek numerals meant the number was multiplied by 10,000. A double myriad meant the number was multiplied by 10,000 squared. To distinguish numerals from their normal language, Greeks either added an accent at the end or a bar extended over them. Most contemporary scholars use a bar just because it's a clearer distinction. In terms of simple arithmetic, such as multiplication, the Greeks' process was performed by starting with the highest order in each numeral and finding the sum of its partial products, and then adding them together to get the final result. We can give a pretty simple modern translation of this computation. All the mathematicians and their mathematical discoveries in this series would have been written and solved in this numeral system. Thanks for watching this video in our series on the history of Greek math mathematics. Click the links here to watch the next video in our playlist, watch the full playlist, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.